the White House backed health care bill was tanked by a revolt in the House, but it was facing steep opposition in the Senate as well. Senator Mike Lee of Utah and Congressman Charlie Dent of Pennsylvania are about as far apart on the Republican ideological spectrum as you can get. But one thing they both agreed on, they weren't going to vote for this bill as it was written. And they both join me now together. Gentlemen, welcome. Senator Lee, let me start with you. Um, the president is blaming the Freedom Caucus, Club for Growth, and Heritage for, quote, protecting Planned Parenthood and Obamacare. Is that a fair read of what happened this week, sir? That is not at all how I see it. Uh, this bill didn't pass because it didn't deal with the most fundamental flaw in Obamacare, the part of Obamacare that has made health care unacceptable and unaffordable. Until we get a bill that actually brings down the cost of health care for hardworking Americans, we're not going to get something that passes. Congressman Dent, do you pin the blame? Some people pin the blame uh, on, uh, on the moderates. In fact, we heard, you just heard Mick Mulvaney say it wasn't just the Freedom Caucus, the moderates helped tank this too. The president is blaming the Freedom Caucus. What say you? Well, I, I tend to agree with the president on that, on that point. Hey, let's be very honest about this. A lot of the concessions that the White House was making at the end of this process were to try to appease and placate the hard right on essential health benefits and other issues, all to placate people who are not going to vote for the bill anyway. And by doing that, they ended up alienating more people on the center right or moderates. That was really what happened. The bottom line, Chuck, is in order to reform health care in this country, we're going to have to do it in a durable, sustainable way and in a bipartisan manner. We, as Republicans, should not make the same mistakes that the Democrats did in 2010 by muscling mm -hmm. that law through. Uh, I voted against it. They muscled it through. We, the Republicans, right. are attempting to make the same mistake. We need to do this in a durable, bipartisan, sustainable way. Before I go back to Senator Lee, Congressman, uh, I want to ask you to respond to something that is in the New York Times Magazine this morning. Um, and it's an anecdote about the president and you. According to an attendee of, of a meeting you had with him this week, the president angrily informed you, Congressman Dent, that, he was, that you were, quote, destroying the Republican Party and, quote, you were, it was going to take down tax reform and I'm going to blame you. Is that how the president, is that what the president said to you and how did you respond? Well, I'm not going to deny that. I, I listened very respectfully to what the president had to say, but my bottom line is this. This discussion has been far too much about artificial timelines, arbitrary deadlines, all to affect the baseline on tax reform. This conversation should be more about the people whose lives are going to be impacted by our decisions on their health care. We did not have enough of a substantive discussion. I'm holding up a, a, a plan from Republican governors from expansion states like mine, Kasich, uh, Snyder, right. Sandoval, Hutchinson. They wanted, they wanted to be part of this process. They were not brought in. I mean, those kinds of issues were very important to me uh, and to the people I represent and, frankly, to a lot of the members of Congress who are part of our center-right group, the Tuesday group, were very right. concerned about the Medicaid changes. And so, yeah, I, I, I can hold my ground. Senator Lee, I, I want to, you heard Mick Mulvaney said they're moving on. You heard the president said he's glad health care is behind him. Uh, first of all, what say you? Is health care behind you? Absolutely not. Look, uh, Republicans have been campaigning for seven years on repealing Obamacare. We need to do that. We need to do that very thing. We need to get back to the table and get people negotiating. Look, uh, as a whole lot of people said just the other day, as Paul Ryan himself said when this bill was going down the tubes, he said we came so close. And he's right. They were not far away from a deal. They could have gotten to a deal. There were a few things they could have added to the bill that could have brought enough people into the bill to vote for it so that it would have passed. This is part of the legislative process. The process has to be allowed to play itself out. And as you pointed out, devoting 17 legislative days to a bill and, and then walking away from it because it hasn't passed within 17 legislative days makes no sense, especially when this is uh, something that we've been campaigning on for seven years and the American people are hurting. Hardworking uh, middle-class Americans across this country are unable to afford health care because of this bill. We've got to fix that. We've got to repeal it. Now that I have two, the two of you that are, represent the sort of the ideological poles of the Republican Party, I want to ask you both whether you agree with the following quote from a colleague of yours, Senator Lee, it's Bill Cassidy, Republican from Louisiana. He has his own health care bill. He said this, that now, quote, there's widespread recognition that the federal government, Congress, has created the right for every American to have health care. Essentially, uh, Senator Lee, 
He is saying the debate's over about whether government should be involved with this or not, and now it's just time to design a law that acknowledges this right, that people have a right to health care, and the government's got to figure out how to do it for them. Do you concur with that? Insofar, he's, he's talking about a federal right. You know, rights are things the government can't do to you. Uh, rights are not something that the government must do for you or provide for you. And insofar as he's suggesting that the federal government is the, the key, uh, that an increased federal presence is somehow going to bring down the cost of health care, uh, that's simply not true. And in fact, that's uh, refuted abundantly by the mm -hmm. last seven years, by what's happened since Obamacare was passed where this bill was passed and we brought the federal government into it with the promise that this would somehow make health care more affordable. It has had quite the opposite effect. Congressman Dent, uh, I'm going to guess that you probably are in more agreement with Senator Cassidy. Well, I, I spoke with Senator Cassidy and Senator Collins at length. Uh, Senator Cassidy from a very conservative state, Louisiana, I tend to agree that we have a national health care architecture now flawed as it is, and I voted against it, uh, but we're going to have to work with it to try to make this system better, more market-oriented, uh, patient-friendly, patient-centered. Uh, I think to a certain extent that debate has already been settled. We do have sort of a national health program. Our job is now to fix it and make it much better than it is today because it's simply not working for too many Americans. Well, Senator Lee, Congressman Dan, I'm going to leave it there, but I have a feeling that there's a divide here on the role of government that hasn't been bridged inside the Republican Party, and until that's done, uh, we still may have this debate uh, to go on and on and on. Gentlemen, I appreciate you coming on together. It's good to have you both. Hey, Thank thanks you. so much, John.